This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? We're back again onto the uh, dog anti bark device. If you haven't followed in the first uh, few episodes of this, my neighbor's dog barks incessantly. And since I don't get along with my neighbors, they encourage the dog to bark whenever I go outside or, you know, Dogly and I go outside, which annoys me. Much as I'd like to kick the little dog, I don't hurt animals. I love animals. So I looked online for bark stop device, anti-bark device. And basically it's just an ultrasonic tone generator at around 20 kilohertz, which is higher than most humans can hear except for teenagers, and it will annoy the dogs, so hopefully it will stop them from barking. So that's where we're at. Those devices, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks, I don't want to spend that. Just, number one, I don't know if it's going to work. So make my own. I mean, what are we playing around with electronics for if we can't make our own devices anyway, right? Right. So this is what I have cooked up. Let me uh, adjust you in here a little bit. And we'll take a look at what is going on here. So we have two parts to our circuit. We have the tone generator part here. And we have the amplifier here. And they are capacitively coupled to remove any DC from going into the amplifier. So the tone generator is a 555 timer hooked up in what I call the simplest a stable multi vibrator. You only need two components: a uh, potentiometer, a little trimmer pot, you know, and a uh, capacitor. You connect pin uh, four to pin eight. That's your reset to your input voltage. You connect your trigger to your threshold six to two, and you connect um, two to one with the with the uh, timing capacitor across it. Now, this capacitor is what controls the frequency. Basically, it, it's a combination of these two resistors here and this capacitor here that are actually going to uh, do the frequency. It's an RC circuit. I explained this in the first video. Um, if you want to know more about it, just look up RC circuit timing, and you'll find out all you need to know about that. So this is going to generate a square wave, a pulsed wave output somewhere around 20 kilohertz. That's why I have put the trimmer potentiometer on here so we can adjust it 555 does drift a little bit so it's not going to be exact but i don't think we need to be exact i think we just need to be in that range now i chose the lm386 as the output uh amplifier because it's so simple if you don't want to play around with the gain of it you don't need any external components other than a decoupling capacitor on the output the 386 hooked up off the data sheet with no external components is going to give you a gain of um, 20 but basically just pick a capacitor any capacitor you got sitting around and attach it between pin um, 1 and pin 8 and that is going to go 10 times the gain to about 200 and then this is my decoupling capacitor for the speaker which we're going to get to in a minute Let me just move this out of the way here here is the circuit that we just talked about with the NE555 timer. You see how we have the potentiometer across pins 8, 7, and 6? And the capacitor goes between pin 1 and 2 there. Over here on the LM386, I'm using a 0.01 microfarad capacitor to induce the gain circuit. And then I have a 2 millifarad, not micro, milli. 2000 microfarad capacitor as a decoupling capacitor going to the speaker and okay, just everything we talked about is here i did not put a voltage here because right now i'm testing this at uh six volts but i think i may run it at a, with a nine volt battery we're going to see how that goes i have to check the data sheet on the lm386 i know the 555 timer can handle it so we'll just have to check that one and we should be good to go. So, let us attach this up here. And 
we're going to use one of these little ultrasonic tweeter beaters that I got yesterday. A couple days ago, actually. And we'll connect this up. If you are wearing headphones and you have good hearing, this is probably going to be a really annoying sound for you. So, you've been warned. All right, here comes the sound. We are at 14.27 kilohertz there. I'm taking to show you the... Uh, there's our waveform. Now, if I adjust it... Oh, I think I just did something bad. I think I just put six volts of DC into this speaker. Crap. When I hooked it up, I plugged it in the wrong place. Crap, crap, crap. Let's see if it still works. It may not. Nah, I think I killed it. Hang on a second. All right, we're good. I tested the speaker. It is still functioning. If you missed it, I went to plug it into this column here, which is, you know, in line with the uh, the capacitor right here, but I accidentally plugged it into the VCC rail. Oops. So we connect this up here. Show you the waveform. The uh, this little dip here is new. I didn't get that before. Let's adjust our frequency up because I'm actually beginning to hear that. Right at 20 kilohertz. And Dogley has left the room. So, what do we think? I tell you, I'm impressed with just about everything so far. Um, I'm going to disconnect the speaker. For anybody who could actually hear that and was probably going crazy, I apologize. All right, so let me go look at the LM386 database and see if we can actually uh, drive this thing in 9 volts. I'm pretty sure we can. You can see, as you can see for right now, I'm driving it at 6 volts. Let's find out what happens. Yep, we're good. The uh, LM386 wide supply voltage, 4 to 12 volts or 5 to 18 volts. So, let's take this up to 9. Do, do, do. 9 volts. Okay, 9 volts made a hell of a difference. We're like 38 kilohertz. No, I don't like 9 volts. 9 volts was just convenient. Let's go... Uh, Seven point four. That's a two cell lipo. Frequency still a little funky at thirty eight kilohertz. Let's see what happens. 
We can slow it down here. No. No, no, no. All right, let's go back down to six volts. Six volts. Here we go. Plug that back in. So can you guys hear that? I know it's producing sound. Here's 20 kilohertz in the waveform. Does not look terrible. All right, I'm gonna unplug the speaker. I think that's it. I mean, I think that's what we're gonna go with. So let me know what you guys think down below. And uh, if you guys think this is viable, I, I, I do. If you guys think it's viable as well, like I said, let me know down below. And we'll take it to the next step and put it on a, uh, I thought I had some proto boards there. We'll put it on a pro, we'll solder it to a proto board, you know, like a, what do they call them, bare boards. Check it in that method because breadboards are notorious for having a, uh, just a ton of capacitance and inductance in there. Because, you know, basically they're just strips of metal. All right, so that'll be our next step. If you guys have any comments, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out the video of our sponsor, Solder Stick, here at the end. All right, guys. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.